Hello everybody. So in this video, what I wanted to show is the use of this mesh uh, grid uh, and how it interacts with the landscape. So first of all, let's go to search classes and type in USurf, bring in a USurfis mesh grid. And by default, you just get the preview mesh that shows. Now let's make this a little bit bigger, change the dimension scale. Also change the complexity as well. The complexity is like a subdivision. So it uses whatever grid sizes you've, you've specified and then just subdivides it eight times. And then we turn on create mesh. I will change the material. Now at the moment, the project mesh is turned off. So the mesh, if we look at all the vertices, the mesh can freely, when you move it around, just go through the landscape. But if you make all the vertices go above the landscape, then just before I do this, we can shift as well. So we can shift before removal by uh, a certain number of centimeters. So if I turn on project mesh now, now all the vertices are projected down onto the surface and then elevated above the landscape by 20 centimeters. So if I go to live update interval and make it uh, 0.1 of a second, so that's a tenth of a second, and at the moment it's on update on move. So when I Hold shift down and I move this grid mesh, then it reprojects each time um, at every tenth of a second. And that then captures the surface. And then when you let go, all the normals are recalculated uh, so that all the shading can be correct. And the same thing for when you rotate as well, which remember that they all the, the vertices are projected along. Uh, they're normal as well. So that's why sometimes you can end up in the situation where some of the vertices get stretched out because those ones are are being projected uh, straight down. So if I turn off project mesh you can see where the grid actually is by default. You know this is where the grid mesh vertices actually are. And then when you turn on project mesh, they're projected down onto the landscape along their normals. And so some of them can end up um, stretching out. And so if we move it to where we would perhaps want to use it on the landscape, we're sort of set, setting up our surface area here. Then we can also use um, capture height uh, data as well. So at the moment, we're only projecting and it's like a live project. So, you know, when we move the grid mesh, we aren't move, we're moving where the mesh is, but it's reprojecting each time. So if I don't want that and I just want to capture that surface that's there, I can turn off project mesh and click capture height. Now, the same thing occurred, all of them vertices are being projected down onto the surface and then elevated by the 20 centimeter shift before setting. But the difference is, is that all of them offsets have now been stored inside of this, this uh, grid mesh. And so now if I move that, then the shape is preserved. And of course you're free to uh, stamp the mesh um, to be a static mesh as well in that, in that situation. And then if I move it, um, rotate it, whatever, and I want to recapture, you just choose capture height again, and it recaptures it. This height data is actually used inside of the uh, texture uh, rendering, uh, sorry, render textures section to render out the height. Um, so we'll clear the capture data on this one and we'll turn back on project mesh again. Now at the moment, it's told to 
project, sorry, update on move. So if you go to the landscape tools and we try and sculpt the landscape, then at the moment the mesh will not change because it's not moving, it's not reprojecting. But if I want to update it, then we just move that grid mesh, let go, the normals will get recalculated and we end up back with our new mesh again. But if you come down to the live update uh, section and turn on always update, then now go to landscape and sculpt, then as you sculpt the mesh is being updated. Every time you let go it's updated and it's reprojected. And then you're still free to move it around if you want to. Uh, you can also change the size of the grid as well. So if we want to, um, so if we turn off uh, create mesh, they'll go back to the preview mesh. And now we can see where the top is and that that is there just to show us in these settings here what, you know, which uh, side relates to which setting. So if I turn back on um, create mesh again and I want to extend it on the right hand side, then I just go to the right and I specify some more um, grid cells on the right hand side uh, and then to the left. And as you do this, then more vertices are created and the UVs are stretched out because it's trying to keep zero to one and zero to one. So once we have that, then we can then go down to um, the stamp mesh section, choose where we want to stamp this mesh um, inside of our content browser. And we'll go to stamp meshes there. Give it a name if you want to. At the moment it's set to name with number, so it'll, it'll append the number one to there. Uh, and it'll try and, you know, if you already have a one, then it'll just keep incrementing the number until it is unique. Um, and so we just go stamp mesh. Now that's made it into an actual static mesh. So what you see inside the level now, the, the use surface mesh grid has been turned off and the static mesh has been placed into the level exactly where it was. So if we go into this static mesh, and as well as that, Nanite has been turned on as well. So if we have a look at the, uh, the surface here, then you can actually see Nanite is doing what it does. Uh, and we can turn that off if we want, in which case we'll just go back to the the original grid. You may need to just right click that and go to Nanite and then turn Nanite off. And then that goes to back to the original vertices that were in the mesh. Um, but this is now a static mesh, so you're free to export this out and sculpt in uh, Blender or ZBrush or whatever you want to do, and then bring it back in. So I will turn back on Nanite there. Now at the moment, um, let's say you end up in the scenario where we delete the uh, use surface mesh grid and we also delete the static mesh actor out of the level and then you think, oh well I would like that static mesh back in the level again exactly where it was. All you have to do is just drag in a use surface mesh grid, it doesn't matter where you put it, uh, and it'll just show the preview again. And then we come down to um, the link section that's within settings. And then we can cho choose that um, static mesh and put it into place mesh. 
And then now we go back up to the top and we choose Place Mesh. So it's been placed back into position again. And we also have the option to go back down to Link. And then under Recreate Mesh Actor, we can choose the pipette and go and choose that uh, static mesh. And then we can also go back up to the menu and choose Recreate Mesh. So now Yusuf's Mesh Grid has picked that back up and is now fully editable again. So I hope that's uh, cleared up a few questions that you perhaps have about use of this mesh and some just some of its capabilities. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me.